All right, everyone, let's go. It is time to level up your looping. Uh, please let me know and in the community if you're having heaps of fun with this. I'm very, very excited. Uh, we're about to start leveling up our looping skills. So I'm making sure that my loop is cleared. But with this, uh, with this module, this lesson is going to be all about uh, my looping workflow and how to stack your layers. So um, you all should know by now how to play a loop in time. Uh, so if you don't know, go back to that video. And if you don't know and you have gone to that video, which is earlier in the course, because um, I suck at communicating, let me know and I will re-record it for you. So what is happening from this point forward is we're going to discuss the workflow of the looping the way I like to loop. So when we're talking about mindsets, um, this is how you add um, effects to a song and you use it as an arrangement tool. So first things first, we're only going to be using one track uh, for everyone who's into the to the looping thing. Um, I want to make sure that we can get this, uh, this first practice run. You guys will all use just one track and you will learn um, what it feels like to stack heaps of layers on one track um, and then see how you go. Uh, we can go into multi-track looping uh, later on. That'll be for the intermediate, more advanced people uh, that are wanting to get into looping. I will also have uh, tutorials on how to use the Edge here in Looper X, uh, how to use the RC300 that I have over there and the RC30. Um, uh, so those will be optional courses and videos that you guys can use. Now, when it comes to setting up multiple layers, um, you got to define, again, define your expectation of what you want out of the song. Think about how long the chord progression is going to go and how long you're going to be looping for. Um, the example I'm going to give you today is going to be Shape of You. Um, we're, uh, we'll do how to do the layers first and then the next video I will go into like a full tutorial where you guys will be able to do and copy what I do. Um, so for now, uh, don't stress about picking up your instrument or doing anything like that. Just pay attention to how I'm approaching my loops. Now, my workflow is going to always go, uh, typically will always go, uh, guitar first, because that's for me. You need to find what connects you to the song's timing. This is a, a really, really big mistake. You might hear someone who does it like a beatbox first and then they stack, um, which there's pros and cons for that. I will discuss that in another video on like dumb mistakes that I made. Uh, but the workflow should start on what keeps you in time. Now, for me, whenever I go to play, especially early days when I was looping um, and just early days in gigging, I found that my timing when it came to singing and playing guitar was really, really shocking. Like I would accelerate on songs. Um, I would start the songs too fast um, because I had like this, I was like, oh, to connect with people and to get them hyped up like on the song, I got to play it quicker, you know? And that's a really big mistake you see people who gig do, but that's a different conversation. But um, what I found was like, okay, well then I really trained myself to get in time. And so my guitar playing um, would cue my vocals and then I would time, like I would use my vocal rhythm, like what I was comfortable in. Like, so the club is in the best place to find the lovers or the bar is where I go. So that is my timing. So then I'd be like, Love is the best place to find the lovers so the bar is where I go. And so that would be my timing. So that's how I would set up my timing. Now, that means obviously I'm not playing bass, I'm not playing drums, I'm not doing anything. So that means my guitar playing is going to be the first layer that's going to lock in with my vocal. Um, when you go to lay down your first layer or just in general any layers, you do not want to be bleeding sound. So like if you're singing while playing, um, you will hear it in this, if I do it like this, Love is in the best place to find a lover, so the bar is where I go. I think you can hear it slightly. So it will bleed into the pickups. So just be aware of that when you're doing it or recording any guitar stuff. So I would typically layer down uh, my guitar track first. I'm just going to put my headphones on just so I can make sure. I'm hearing everything that I am telling you guys. So I was trying to look pretty in the video, but I don't think you guys are here for my looks. Uh, <laughs> I think you're here for some knowledge. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in. 
I'm going to lay down my chords first, and then I'm going to go for my beat. That's usually my next thing. I'll get my beat. And then I'm going to do my bass, which would be like. And then after that, I have my choices, right? So I have my choices if I want to add like a vocal, like harmony. If I want to do that, I can do that. If I just want to add like a cool little. I can add like a cool little guitar thing over the top of it or like a. I could do something like that. Or if I want to do like a note. Or sometimes you can do like. Anyway, guitar fills. Sorry, I'm getting too fancy already. Um, so I go chord progression first. So whatever harmony I need. So that's my chord strumming. Then I do drums and then I do bass. And then you make your choice. After there, you can either just start the song and have heaps of fun. Um, sing your song and immediately connect with your audience or whatever you're trying to do. Or you can add a couple more layers if you want to. Um, like that's how I do it. Now, if you're going to be someone like uh, Carl Walkner and stuff like that, Carl it will typically, because um, this is more on the dumb mistake side that we're going, but the, the people who do the drums first typically come from a place that they're very, very clever and they have really, really good time. So you'll hear Carl Walkner do it. He'll start with a beat. He'll do like a really cool like beat. Um, and then he will layer over the top of it because the cleanest sound that you can get, because there will always be bleed. Always be bleed that will, and by bleed, I mean that means audio that's coming from whatever output source that you have. Like could be headphones coming into your microphone, could be a speaker coming to your, fall back into your microphone, the sound of the room coming back into your microphone. Um, there will always be bleed that comes in. So to get the cleanest loop, and obviously that's what someone like Carl Walkner would do, he will do his beat first, so there's absolutely no bleed in his beat track. So it's always clean. There's no there's no messing around with sound. That, that's the most perfect sound you're gonna get. So um, you will just find what keeps you in time is the most highest priority of the list of the layers. So what has the longest duration for the loop? So you need to say the chord progression. That's why I use the chord progression first because that gives me the whole phrase of what I'm going to loop and then I will just layer the other stuff on top of it. Um, but yeah, and then and then obviously you'll optimize for sound if that's something that you want to do. So I'm going to go harmony, drums, bass. Now, when I... Some people will do like... Like a... They'll get like a hi hatty sound um, when they do drums. I don't like to do that. I try to keep it as minimal as possible because I don't want to be doing too many things. Um, I find that too much information makes it harder for people to connect to lyrics and melodies, and it makes me a bit too busy. So if I'm playing uh, the loop, I'm going to go like this. So just pay attention how I go here. I'm going to do my chords. Ready, and the loop goes bomb. So now I stop that because I don't want to jump in right away. Now if I'm like if I'm looping live, I can do it quite quick. Hmm. I uh, I messed that up. Look at that. The teacher has become the failure. All right, let me try it again. Hmm. That should be in time. Yeah, we got it. Now I will go into my drum track. Really simple, right? And now I'm gonna do my bass over the top. And now, whatever you wanna do from here, I can add layers on top of it. I don't have to lay those on top. I don't need to do whatever I want. It's completely up to you. So I could do like, like a... layer over here. Now, 
um, if you just saw what I just did there, I did like a stripping of a layer. So there's a quick undo button. Um, with all your loop pedals, they will have some form of undo button. You need a, you'll get a feel for it as you go in, um, how it works. But that's why typically I, I record and I don't immediately overdub because when you undo, it will undo everything. Um, but I'll go into, um, it'll undo everything that's been recorded in the time frame of your recording. So if I record and I overdub like three layers and then I'm like, oh, nice. But on the third layer, I completely fuck it up and I go undo. It'll undo all three layers that you recorded in that time frame. So that's why undo is a bit dangerous. Um, and I always try to record and then finish because uh, I do dumb things like you just saw. I completely, I played that loop a million times and I still failed. Now, I built my, my layers. So I did my guitar, did my drums, did my bass, and I added whatever extra I did. Now, you all have like, we're all going to have one track, right? Now, the approach to singing and playing the song will be up to you. So that is how I will stack all the layers. Um, and then I will just jump in and have heaps of fun. And so I've got, you know. That's not too much. And then I'm about to bring it in. Your body on me Coming out from the mighty Coming, coming out from the mighty mm -hmm. I'm in love with the shape of you I push and pull like a magnet do Although my heart is falling too I'm in love with your body So you can see how it adds an effect to it Now, um, typically I've got like multi-track going But say, I'm just giving you my two cents I've got one track going here I would be very, very simple when it comes to this song So Instead, um, this is a unique approach, by the way. You can just dip out on this video if you don't want to hear it. But um, what we're going to do uh, is I'm going to set up my harmony now differently because I'm going to be like, okay, actually, I don't want the loop pedal because I've only got one track, right? I don't want the loop pedal to be taking over like everything. So why don't I just loop the bass to get my harmony groove going and then do a bit of drums. And then every time I want to add that in, I can add that in. So I got... So every time I want to add it. Girl, you know, I want your love. Your love will send me for some party that me. Come on up on my day. Come on up on my day. Uh -uh. I'm in love with the sheep of you. She pull like a magnet do. But my heart is falling too. I'm in love with your body. Last night she put my room. I bet she smell like you. Now you can see how that is quite simple and very chill. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is you've got to build the layers and, and set, up, set up the goal of what you want to get out of the song. Uh, so, for instance, I'm going to play a song. Hey, everyone, hope you're doing good. No, I don't even say that. I'm just like playing whatever song I played before and then I just jump into my next song. But um, say I was going to jump into the song. Ready? You can set your stopwatch. I'm going to look here. Ready? One, and... And that's ready. That took me like 15 seconds. The club isn't the best place to find the lovers, so the bar is where I go. I'm already in. I'm just, I'm ready shredding. I'm ready, Dan. And then as soon as I want that extra little bit of oomph to my playing, come on, Nelly. Oh, yeah. Girl, you know I want your love. Send me for somebody that me Come on out from the mind Leave the crazy Don't mind me You say boy Simple right? Um, you don't need to be crazy with this stuff uh, And like obviously my biggest Like that was the song That was like the nail in the coffin for me Was just the Oh I'm really bad at doing rhythms first. So in case you just saw what just happened there, I was like, yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. I'm so used to having, anyway, don't worry. Sorry. So what will happen as well, um, this is just a quick side note, side quest, uh, is once you layer down your first layer, every layer will revolve around that. So it will repeat automatically. So 
So say for instance, I do the. Every single thing in this mode, which is the default mode on most loopers, will always repeat at that point. So I don't actually have to hit the re-record. I can just like hit the record button and then I can leave it and it can overdub as many layers as I want. So I don't have to keep pushing the button on and off. Here it comes. So once you have the first layer, your master layer, that's going to set the timing up for all of your all of your loops. So you don't need a multi-track loop pedal. You can create quite a good arrangement just by doing that. Um, the only problem with these things is that if I go to play the song, I can't be cheeky and just have like a bass drums and have like a really cool mellow thing. It's every single time it's going to be. And if you're not mad about that, one track looper is for you. Um, so we're going to go into uh an actual we're going to go into the song i'm going to do a tutorial but we're going to do it in a different key that pretty much anyone can play because it'll be a bunch of open chords that even the beginner guitar course people um you know in our school community will be able to tackle this if you guys have a loop pedal so let's uh jump into the next video and i can't wait to see you guys absolutely have fun with this let's go